Hi everybody and welcome to this really quick presentation on supporting health professionals to encourage adults with venous leg ulcers to move. So the aim of the presentation today is to give you a little bit of background information on how exercise helps and why it's important to understand how and what type of exercise that you can recommend and some strategies how you can encourage your clients with venous leg ulcers to move or to exercise whatever your preferred terminology is my background is um, in exercise physiology and in nursing and i had the pleasure of working um, as a wound research nurse way back in the day, under the guidance of Professor Helen Edwards and Dr. Kathleen Finlayson. And my research was really born from that exposure because I used to watch clients shuffle into the wound clinic, struggle to sit down and struggle to stand back up again. And I wondered what we were doing from a functional perspective. And that question then really, um, I guess, we then looked at does improving the strength and endurance of the calf muscle, increasing the blood flow, does that actually translate to improved healing outcomes for adults with venous leg ulcers? So it's been over a 10 year journey in this space. And I think it's really important for health professionals to understand how you can empower your clients to exercise. So as you would know, the problem, you know, venous leg ulcers, they're common and they're costly. People with venous leg ulcers are more likely to be sedentary and increased physical activity may improve wound healing outcomes for adults with venous leg ulcers. And chronic venous insufficiency is a dysfunction of the venous system due to sustained ambulatory venous hypertension in the lower limbs. But debate continues regarding the progression of chronic venous insufficiency to venous ulceration. But failure of the calf muscle pump is thought to be one of the main causes. And this is what I'm really focusing on today. So the calf muscle pump aims to return venous hemodynamics by pumping more than 70% of the blood back to the heart. And it has been referred to as the secondary heart, indicating its importance in maintaining venous return. It is of clinical significance to note that over 70% of patients with a venous leg ulcer have an impaired calf muscle pump and time to healing is prolonged in patients with a calf muscle, impaired calf muscle pump. So patients report problems which are very much lifestyle based, such as sleep disturbances, pain, impaired mobility, altered body image, decreased vitality. And exercise has the potential to offer a range of health benefits, which address all of the lifestyle problems that people with venous leg ulcers state. So the question is, if exercise training is routinely prescribed for other forms of cardiovascular disease, such as peripheral arterial disease and coronary artery disease, why not for venous leg ulcers? Exercise is recommended in most international position statements, and there's been a really great systematic review that Professor Andrew Jell and his team in New Zealand have done in pooling all of the evidence in relation to simple progressive exercises and aerobic activity. And their conclusion was that the evidence base may now be sufficiently suggestive for clinicians to consider re recommending simple progressive resistance and aerobic activity to suitable patients with venous leg ulcers while further research is being produced, which is currently happening in New Zealand and I'm a part of um, that great research that's being done. So how can health professionals help? One of the small uh, studies that I did as part of my PhD was exploring um, what adults with venous leg ulcers or who have had venous leg ulcers, how they thought about exercise. Or, you know, did they want to use the word physical activity? What were their thoughts around the meaning of exercise? And simple, consistent advice from health professionals was one of the strongest emergent themes across all of the interviews. So there was a lot in the findings around confusion because one clinician had said to rest, another clinician had said to exercise, you know, oh. and as a client, as a patient, it's very difficult to be able to differentiate with what am I meant to be doing? Those participants that did exercise, they had an understanding of the relationship between 
why they had a leg ulcer and the potential benefits of exercise, which was really interesting. Fear of harm certainly impacted on whether somebody um, had a positive attitude towards exercise, which is very understandable. And I have to say, it's one of the big reasons why the progressive resistance exercise program that we designed is the way that it is, because the starting place for everybody means that anybody can actually do those exercises. And structured guidelines really facilitate exercise. Again, the importance behind having a really clear protocol that's simple to follow, that somebody can um, self-manage. And I think it's important to also acknowledge that people with venous leg ulcers more often than not have a range of other comorbidities that are going to affect how they're able to perform exercise. But again, this particular home-based exercise program is designed for people with venous leg ulcers, so it does take that into consideration. So any good exercise program, I'd always recommend starting with some really nice, simple, gentle stretches. And I've got up here some simple ankle stretches, calf and hamstring stretches. Now, in terms of the actual targeted form of exercise, the exercises do specifically isolate the calf muscle because we understand that the calf muscle pumps more than 70% of the blood back up to the heart, which works in conjunction with the compression bandaging that you'd be applying. So everybody starts at the very beginning, which is the seated heel raises. They progress to the standing heel raises with both legs, and then they move to the standing heel raises on a single leg or one legged. The very first step though is somebody to be sitting in a chair, well supported in their back, and they're going to raise their heels off the ground 10 times. They do three sets, so a total of 30. They, the break that they have between each 10 reps is really dependent on how much they're feeling that pain in their calf muscle. So it's self-regulated is how you want to be teaching them to do it. They do three sets and they do that three times a day. Once they're able to do that comfortably for three days, then they can increase the amount of repetitions to 15. Again, three sets, three times a day. Once they're doing that comfortably for three days, they increase the repetitions to 20 times. Same protocol, three times a day, three sets each time and then to 25 repetitions, three sets, three times a day. Once they're at that level, they can then progress to the standing heel raises and it follows the same pattern for the standing heel raises, starting with 10 repetitions, working their way all the way up to 25 repetitions. And then once they're doing 25 repetitions, three sets, three times a day, comfortably for three days, then they progress to the final stage, which is the standing heel raises. And I challenge any of you to do single leg heel raises, 25 reps, three sets, three times a day. You're going to feel it. And that's what that maximum amount was really based upon. That's, that's the standard average before somebody, um, you know, fatigues in their calf muscle. In terms of how to actually get somebody to be thinking about when they're going to be doing the exercises and where and what days, that's all part of action planning. And I used to find that it was really helpful for somebody to be thinking about when I'm sitting down and having my breakfast, that's when I could be doing my 10 repetitions when I'm waiting for the kettle to boil and I could be doing my standing heel raises. So you get the person to be thinking about habit stacking essentially and when this is going to work best for them because that's how you can then build in that sustainable change or really good habit formation. I had a GP that I worked with and he said to me he knew that things were working from that implementation perspective when he came out to the clinic to call a patient in and they were sitting there doing their heel raises while they were waiting. And I thought that's fantastic. So this is a really simple um, exercise program that anyone with a venous leg also is able to do. And I do think it is key for long-term support from health professionals. So if you're checking in with your clients when you are changing their bandages, you know, encourage them to exercise. 
ask, you know, how they're going with it, where they're at. As I said, I'm very happy to um, send you a PDF version of the exercise booklet and you can print that out and hand that to clients. So my email is j.a.obrien at utas.edu.au. I'll leave you with some references. So if you do want to um, explore this information you know, more thoroughly, that's fantastic. All the very best and thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you.